hold its shape very well. Not like Epson does where it's kind of like for a lifetime it seems, if not a lifetime. If you don't scratch crap out of your bag and want to throw it away. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is in a different setup because I, as you can see by the title, I'm actually doing an Hermes leather guide video. This video has been highly requested by you guys, so thank you very much for requesting this video. Finally got around to filming it because it did require quite a lot of prep work. Um, before I get into the video, if you aren't already subscribed, I would love if you would hit that subscribe button below and also the bell so you can be notified when I upload new videos, which is generally at least once a week. So this video is, um, like I said, an Hermes leather guide and I'm only going to be talking about the leathers that are currently available today, kind of like permanent leathers. I use the word permanent loosely because we're never really 100% sure if they're going to stick around, but they are the leathers that are available today. So I'm not going to be talking about vintage leathers or discontinued leathers. I can, however, in another video talk about all the other leathers that um, are available in the pre-love market that are discontinued no longer being produced by Hermes but yeah I'm happy to um, include that in another video also like the leathers like Berenia box calf which do still get produced but they are push order offer leathers so that means that with the elusive bags you can only get them as a push offer push offer means that the store is given the bag by France head office. It comes as a surprise. They can't order it. It's just like, here you go, surprise. You are getting an Hermes Brenia Birkin 30, 30, 35, 25, whatever. So it's a surprise to the store when they do get these push order leather offers for Brenner and Boxcar. So the leathers I'm going to be talking about today is Togo, Clemence, Epsom, Swift, Chev, Tadalact and Evercolor. I'm not going to be talking about the newest leathers that have only just come out, I think, in the past 24 months. That's Novillo and Vu Vo Vo. You know what? I'm probably going to butcher some of the pronunciation, but you know what I'm saying. I'm going to leave names to what I'm saying. So if you're French, I apologize in advance. I'm butchering um, your language. Yes, I'm butchering it. I'm Australian and um, I think we're notorious for butchering anything that's in French. Italian unless we're fluent in the language. So as I was saying nothing in Novillo and Vu Jonathan. Oh my god I've already done it again. So neither of those leathers those new leathers um, I will not be talking about today because I don't have enough information on them I do know a little bit about them, but not enough to talk about them So I'm looking at my notes here And I just want to um, also let you know that I have used as a bit of a reference point the Yogi's Closet Hermes guide I have referred back to their guide, but I also have obviously added all the knowledge that I know, my experience with the leathers. So thank you to Yogi's Closet for that guide that they do have. I'm going to link that down below. This is not sponsored by them in any way. I just wanted to give them credit where credit is due. Before I talk about each individual leather, I just have a couple points that are a bit of an overhead when it comes to Hermes leathers. And the thing I want to talk about is there is one particular leather from Hermes that doesn't go through a specific process. So the process that I'm actually talking about is there is like a tumble, it's kind of like a tumble dryer, it's not a tumble dryer, but this is just the way that I can sort of explain it. It's kind of like, like that, that the leathers go through this process where they're kind of rolling around in this kind of tumble situation and they probably go through other things as well, but they go through this process which actually causes grains on the leather, well it creates gra grains on the leather. So obviously the process will vary for each leather as to how the, the grains kind of come out, whether it comes out with no grains, whether it has grains and all those sorts of things. Um, but the reason that I bring this up is that there is one leather from Hermes that does not go through this process. It's pretty much just a, a leather as is and then what happens is that it's heat stamped and that is Epsom. Epsom is the only leather that doesn't go through a tumble process like all the other leathers do. Leather is pretty simple in how it's created. Um, Epsom is pretty simple in how it's created. It's just heat stamped. That's it. That's all That's all there is to it. It's like a cut of, cut of the leather, heat stamped, um, and it creates that artificial grain, which is, yeah, it's artificial. It's not really a grain. It's an imprinted grain. Another thing that I also wanted to talk about as well as a bit of an overhead to my last point is that um, I've written here on my notes, don't ever be caught in the rain with any of these leathers. Like, I think there's only one exception, but it's not included in this in this video. But out of all the leathers that I'm talking about, do not be caught in the rain with them. They can all blister. I have even seen Epsom blister. I've seen a photo on the purse forum. People think that Epsom um, is 
probably the most weatherproof one out of all, but it's not. It can get blistering just like all the other ones, like Togo, Clemence, they all can blister. Now let's jump into talking about each individual leather. We're going to start off with Togo, and Togo was released in 1997. It is an anti-scratch calf leather. It holds its shape when stored properly. Uh, larger bags can slouch over time. Um, it's just because there is some slight weight to the weather, to the left oh, the weather. Oh my gosh, I was just talking about weather. That's why. Um, so yeah, but smaller bags that are made in Togo do tend to hold their shape quite well over time. So I've got my Birkin 30 here, for example. This is we're almost at one year old we're only shy of about two months of being a year old and I store this bag upright which is not the recommended way of storing your bags you're supposed to lay them flat in the box or just lay them flat but yeah I store it upright and I have no slouching at all um it's always sort of been like this where it's been a little bit like it's just a leather where it's kind of got like a bit of puff to it. That's just the leather as is. It's always been like that. As you can see on the sides, it's still looking really good. So this hasn't slouched yet. However, in a Birkin 30, it does have a higher chance of slouching over time. It would probably take quite a while for that to slouch. If that was a Birkin 25, it would take a long, 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 long time for it to start slouching unless you really stored it very poorly. I do keep it like stuffed or I put a bag organi organizer in there. So at the moment there's a bag organizer in there and it feels fairly firm anyway, so it's holding the shape. Um, the other thing is that this, it's kind of a medium weight lever. It's not, I wouldn't say it's lightweight, but it's not exactly the heaviest of leathers either. So that's something to note. Um, the appearance of the leather, as you can see, it's a pebbled finish. So that's it close up and because I've got some of the studio, obviously I've got studio lights on, I'm going to include an insert from Yogi's Closet Hermes Guide. So pretty much all the leather insert pictures I'm going to include will be from their guide because they've got a close up image. I might include wherever possible other images as well if I feel like it coincides with what I'm sort of saying. With my bag, you can see that there's no graining on, like, sorry, not going to no graining. There's no veining on the bag. Sometimes with Togo leather, you can get veining on the bag, but mine has none. There's nothing on the back. It's just the grain. That's all it is. It's just the classic Togo grain. No veining whatsoever. But yeah, some Togo leathers do have veining. Some people don't like that. Um, but to me, it doesn't really bother me either way. I think my Birkin 30 in black that I had a long while ago, um, couple, just over a couple of years ago, did have some sort of light veining on it. Uh, but these days, I'm not seeing a lot of Togo bags, like new bags with great uh, with the veining on it. So yeah, some people don't like it. Per personal preference. So if you are looking to get a Togo bag and you think that you're not going to like the veining that can happen, then you're going to have to look quite closely at it because when it's new, you may not see it so much. The other thing I've got noted is that there is a bit of a slight sheen to the leather. I can't really, I mean, I can sort of see it. Like it's really ever so slight, like, like, it is not obvious, it's just really slight where you kind of look at it on an angle and there's a little bit of like a, a sheen to it that kind of just sits on top of the grain. It's because the grains are really small, so usually when it's got like, it's not really, really small, but it's small, but usually with um, grains that are of a smaller size do tend to get some kind of sheen or iridescence. So on the Togo, it does sort of have a slight sheen to it. If I kind of tilt it like that, maybe you can sort of see it's not totally matte. The availability of Togo. Togo is quite readily available however it's not available in a Celia Kelly unless you special order it. I don't know if it's even available in a Constance if you special order it. I know it's definitely not available in a Constance normally but yeah it might be available in the special order but otherwise Togo is available for Birkins and Retorn Kellys. We are only talking about the elusive bags today Birk and Kelly Constance. I'm not dwelling into the other bags that would just take way too long. Now let's talk about some cons. So my cons that I've got here is that it will slouch over time in larger bags if it's not stored correctly. It can still inevitably slouch over time in larger bags like B35, pretty much inevitable. B30, it's more dependent on storage. You might get only moderate slouch. It's not the lightest leather option that Hermes has. It's in the kind of like a mid-weight sort of category, but it's not really that bad. I'm fine with it. I think the heavier you go, the more weight you'll feel because there's more leather to the bag. Uh, it's The other con is that, like I mentioned, it's not available in the Constance or the Kelly Cellier normally. 
uh, it can easily be subject to color transfer due to the grains. And the reason I say this is that because the grains are quite prominent, they're there, you can, you can kind of hear my nail kind of running over them, that causes friction. So if I'm wearing color saturated jeans that aren't color fast, it can actually cause color transfer on Togo bags. When I had a trench Kelly, I had jeans that I thought were color fast. They weren't even very richly saturated in dye, but it managed to get color transfer on the bag. Luckily, I was able to quickly clean it up because I only kind of went to run errands and was home within an hour and a half of it happening anyway. Uh, the pros. So it does well in an Hermes spa. If you need to retouch this bag, if you get sort of corner wear or anything like that on Togo, it does do really well, retouches really well. Uh, it's the most popular leather from Hermes. It's scratch resistant. It is very scratch resistant, actually. I think it's pretty difficult to get a scratch on a Togo bag unless you're going at it with a knife. It will generally hold its shape when stored correctly with the exception of very large bags, like I said. The leather has a semi sheen to it, that's, so that's a little bit of a pro. It's not totally matte if you like a little tiny bit of a sheen. Um, it's got small pronounced grains, which give a lot of character to the leather. Like I said, that kind of small grain is quite flattering. <laughs> Again, hopefully this is kind of coming up with these studio lights. I can see my daughter's head just popping up there. <sighs> Mum life. So yeah, those little grains give character to the leather because yeah, they just, they make it obvious that it's a leather bag. And it's also a relatively carefree leather. There's pretty much not much you have to worry about with this leather. Yeah, there's nothing you have to worry about other than rain, but that's going to be inclusive for everything. So yeah, it's, it's a really carefree leather and it's more readily available probably out of all the leathers, I would say. It's more commonly produced. Now let's move on to Clemence. Clemence was released in the mid-1980s. Its durability is that it's anti-scratch and it's also a leather that is made from baby bull calf. The shape, I would say that it's the most slouchiest of leathers out of all Hermes leathers, yeah, definitely the most slouchiest. It doesn't hold its shape well, even in a small bag, just expect that it's going to slouch over time. And if it's not stored correctly, it's gonna slouch really, really quickly in Clemence. I don't have a Clemence bag to show you. I'm only gonna be able to show you today t um, Togo and Swift leathers in person, well, you know, on video. Otherwise, I'm just gonna include photos. The weight with this leather, it is actually the heaviest, it's the heaviest leather that I'm talking about, going to be talking about today. It's heavier than Togo, um, so it's the heaviest leather that's available in the classic kind of permanent line leathers that we all know of. As for the appearance, the grains on Clemence are actually not as deep as what they are on Togo. They're also larger. Each individual grain is larger than what it is on Togo. Therefore, this actually creates a more matte effect to the leather. Colors are actually captured really well on Clemence leather. They do display quite nicely. It's just that you're going to get a more matte effect. And if you actually look at a Togo bag, if you were to look at a Togo bag in um, Etoupe versus a Clemence bag in Etoupe, you'll actually notice that the Togo then has, you'll see the sheen in comparison to the matte that Clemence has. The availability for this leather, it's quite similar to that of Togo. It's not available in a Kelly Cellia or a Constance, perhaps maybe a special ordered. Um, it's available only in the Birkin and the Kelly Return. Cons of this leather, it does slouch quickly across all sizes. Birkin 25, Kelly 25, it's going to slouch. You're gonna, you're gonna get a mushy kind of feel to the leather. It's not available in the Kelly Cellia uh, or the Constance. It can feel like a heavy leather, so you will feel the weight of a Clemence bag. In the smaller sizes, probably not so much, but if you're comparing like a Kelly 25 in Clemence versus a Kelly 25 in Swift, you're really gonna see the weight difference. You're gonna feel the weight difference. Clemence is also not often seen in Birkin 25 and Kelly 25. You don't see that very often. Like even in the like pre-loved market with older bags, yes, it exists, but it's just not seen very often. And nowadays you hardly sort of see Clemence in those smaller size bags. They tend to just be using it for the bigger bags like the Birkin 30, the Birkin 35, the Kelly 28, you know, and so forth. They're using it for the larger size bags. Not sure why that is. Maybe it's just a harder to obtain leather, or maybe it's just that it doesn't suit the smaller sizes because it does really slouch over time. Now onto the pros of Clemence leather. It does well in spa. Again, it behaves like Togo in a sense where if you need to get the corners touched up, it'll be pretty much undetectable that you've had to get the touch up done. 
it's scratch resistant so you're unlikely to have to send the bag to spa for that kind of reason so yeah it's generally a carefree leather as well like what togo is it does give a slouchy effects effect to the bag quite quickly which is still a pro because some people really like that kind of slouchy kind of that bag that's really supple looking so that's a great thing about clemence is that you'll get that quite quickly colors appear matte so you get a very different kind of look on clemence and what you do on togo and some of the other leathers as well because it's just a clear matte powder powdery matte kind of effect with the colors epsom epsom was released in 2003 it was actually a replacement for corchevel leather which has very similar characteristics anyway it's a vintage leather that's been discontinued so it did replace that epsom so the durability of epsom something that i brought up before quite controversially a lot of people say that it's scratch resistant however many avid hermes collectors lovers uh connoisseurs would disagree with you and anyone who says that it's scratch resistant i said earlier this leather never goes through a tumble process it doesn't develop any kind of grain it's as is leather with an artificial heat stamped grain to it so the grain is completely artificial and what that means is because it's an artificial grain it gives that kind of glossy kind of laminated effect to the leather and there is no there's no ability for color to soak into the leather so when they color epsom bags quite oftenly enough i don't think i've known of any other any color that isn't like this is that there's a white or some kind of different color contrast underneath the color of the leather so when you scratch the bag you'll be exposing white dots i think on black it's the same it's maybe like a grayish white so yeah because this leather doesn't go through that tumble process and it's just an artificial grain colors never soak the, the dye never soaks into the leather the shape of epsom it does hold shape really well that's its biggest point is that it's a firm fairly firm leather you know a bit different in perhaps other bags but we're talking about in the elusive kelly burke and constance because it's a double line bag it's a it means that epsom gets to showcase what it really can do which means that it's a very firm structured leather so pretty much any bag in epsom is going to hold its shape over time like guaranteed epsom is one of the lightest leathers that hermes offers it's not the lightest but it's very very light as for the appearance of epsom like i said it's artificial graining it's got very small grains but they're not real uh they feel kind of like the bag sort of feels like it's a laminated effect because of the heat stamped grains they're very small grains but they don't feel like grains of leather so another thing to note about the um, appearance is that because those grains have been impressed in you can kind of feel like each individual grain feels like a bit of a hard like rough kind of bump whereas like on togo you can kind of feel that the grain is smushy like each individual grain has like a smush to it whereas on epsom you don't get that kind of feeling the availability of epsom it's pretty much available in every every elusive bag there's not one here that i can think of that it isn't available in so it's in the birkin it's in the kelly cellia and return and it's also in the constance you don't see it so much in the kelly return but it is available especially in the pre-loved market but it's just not that commonly produced especially nowadays they tend to focus on epsom with the kelly cellia instead but and yeah you will still see epsom in a birkin and you'll quite often see epsom in the constants now on to the cons some people say that this leather feels artificial and it doesn't feel luxurious and it also doesn't feel expensive like um the other hermes leathers and this is not just coming from me this is not just this is not a biased opinion i agree with that though but this is opinions that i've actually found on the purse forum that quite a lot of people say that epsom feels artificial it feels like it's laminated it doesn't feel like a luxurious leather that hermes offers the other con is that it scratches easily easily some people may disagree but i feel as though the reason that some people say that it doesn't scratch easily is because perhaps they're not really using their bags like you probably have people that will have bag collections like that have they have more than 10 bags um they might have four or five hermes bags but because they have so many bags they're able to rotate them often so then they're not really really using the bag quite rigorously quite often um 
even that with that being said when I had an Epsom bag I didn't use it very often compared to my Swift bag or my Togo bag I didn't use it as often as those but it still managed to get scratched the thing is that Epsom does not spar well because of that effect that the artificial grain gives that kind of laminated effect when they do have to color touch up the bag they're essentially just putting color like they're putting color on top of like a like a laminate like a kind of like a laminate like I was saying like the, the dye doesn't soak into the leathers like the other Hermes leathers because the other Hermes leathers have gone through this process where the oils have come out of the bag and all the richness and all the suppleness and all that sort of thing has come out into the leather. The downfall is that Epsom does not spar well. This is said quite oftenly enough in the purse forum and I have seen pictures of Epsom bags being touched up and you can still see the touch up points. I had an Epsom bag that had to get touched up and you could still see the points where it's been touched up. Now the pros of Epsom is that it will always hold its shape. It's a very structured leather which is what's great about it it's its biggest biggest point that it has is that it's a structured leather it showcases bright pop colors really well on Epsom it's also the cheapest leather option to purchase out of or Hermes so if you want to buy the least price Hermes leather bag then it'll be an Epsom it is the lowest cost leather it's also easy to clean because it's kind of got that laminated effect to the leather it's easy to just wipe it down with like a very lightly damped, not wet, just a very lightly, lightly damped cloth or even just a cloth, like a dry cloth in general, fairly easy to clean. And you're also less likely to get color transfer on um, Epsom because of the fact that it's kind of got that laminated sort of coating. So you're not getting where the color is going to be able to soak into the leather. It can still get color transfer, but it's just not as easy as some of the other leathers that Hermes has. So now onto Swift leather. So I've got my Swift Kelly 25 right here. And Swift was released in 2006 as a replacement for Gulliver leather. So Gulliver leather had pretty much the same characteristics as well. So the durability of Swift leather, it's buttery soft. It's a smooth leather with hardly any visible grain. Like there is, there is a grain, but it's super duper tiny and you have to be looking up close, but otherwise it's just a smooth leather with no visible grain. In my opinion, it does not scratch easily, especially on this kind of tone on that light to mid tone i have i have discussed this before um, when i did a review of the kelly 25 like um wear and tear but yeah it doesn't scratch easily on light to mid tone leathers so swift is a fairly durable leather in my opinion as for the shape of swift in small bags when it is stored correctly it does hold its shape so i have I haven't exactly stored this correctly, but I have kept the bag well stuffed. Like it's got a pillow in there from Bag Puff, which is especially made for the Kelly 25. So it is stuffed quite well and it has held its shape. It is uh, about 16 months old, this bag, and I use this the most out of all my bags, actually. So, um, however, as for the shape in a medium sized bag, it can naturally slouch over time because it is a soft leather. It's not like the kind of slash that you get on Clemence, where Clemence you kind of get like a bulge kind of effect because it's a hardy, thick kind of leather. Whereas Swift, it's a supple, soft leather. So when it does slouch, it's more like a nice and neatly folded puddle. Like it, it, it slouches differently. I'll include a picture of a slouched, uh, I think it's a Birkin that I found on the purse forum, a slouch Swift Birkin, and it kind of just folds neatly. And it doesn't have a bowl, just it's like a nice smooth slouch. So the slouching to a Swift bag is pretty unique in the way that it actually looks. I like how the slouch looks on a Swift bag as opposed to how the slouch looks on a Clemence. That's just personal preference though. Some people like that kind of thick, hardy leather that looks like it's used and loved and it slouches. Whereas Swift isn't, doesn't really give you that kind of look like it's used and loved. It's just a soft leather. Weight, in my opinion, this is actually the lightest leather that Hermes offers. Um, yeah, it's, it's so weightless. It's, it literally feels like you've got nothing. Like when you're carrying this bag empty, and I have a pillow in there at the moment, but when it's empty, it's like you have nothing on at all. It is extremely light. So that's a great thing. But if you want to get a bigger bag, perhaps try to get a Swift bag, because that way you're not feeling the extra weight that comes with having a bigger bag, especially like the Birkin 35, which is a bigger bag. Kelly 32, Kelly 35, Swift is a great option if you don't want to feel the weight of the bag. Availability is that it's available in uh, Birkins, it's available in Kelly Return and it's available in Constance. It's not available in the Kelly Cellier, but that makes sense because it's not a structured leather. The cons of Swift is that in very dark colors like black, 
uh, very deep, like navy, anything that's in that spectrum where it's extremely dark, where you're in that black kind of category, it can show surface scratches. But noting that you have to put enough pressure behind the scratch to get the scratch to sort of show up anyway. Otherwise, generally just a normal scratch, you can kind of buff it out with your finger, similar to like that of Chanel lambskin. It will slouch over time in medium to large bags, like I mentioned. Uh, another con is that you shouldn't overstuff this leather because it can cause an impression in the leather. Now, I do have this fairly stuffed, and in certain, you can sort of see the pocket, like the outline of the pocket, kind of leaves an impression. However, when I take the pillow out, it does go away. This happens in a lot of bags anyway. It happens in um, Togo bags, Clemence bags, where you can kind of see that impression. But it's just good to note that if you are stuffing the bag with something that's not smooth like a pillow, say you're using something, I don't know, even if you're using a towel where it's not perfectly rolled or if you're using tissue paper especially, you could get impression marks. And if you put too many contents in your bag and you use it for say eight hours and you've got like, I don't know, like a pencil kind of poking and you can see the pencil poke, you might leave an impression in the leather. The other con is that it's not available in Kelly Cellia. Now the pros. It's known to show a very rich color accurate to the swatch. Another pro is that Swift is a durable leather. It is, it is durable. It's got a lot of things, a lot of qualities to it that make it durable because it doesn't scratch easily on mid, mid to light tone colors, which are quite common anyway. It's only black that you kind of got to be a bit weary of with Swift. But I have seen Swift black bags that still look really good. Just like you have seen um, Chanel black vintage lambskin bags that look really good. With the Hermes Spa, they can buff that out. That'll come out. You can also sort of do it at home with conditioning, but at the Hermes Spa, they do the best job. Basically, a Swift bag at an Hermes Spa can come out pretty much undetectable. But when it comes to color touching up, Swift does do a fantastic job of color touch up, not detectable. Great leather, in my opinion. That's why I love Swift. Very lightweight leather, so you don't feel the weight of the bag when it's made in Swift, which is great. You kind of don't want to feel like your bag is heavy. It also feels very luxurious. The feel of Swift leather is like no other. It feels very, it's hard to explain, but to the touch, it's got kind of got like this like uh, smooth, buttery kind of feel to it. It's like when you're running your, your fingers over, you feel like you're touching something that is extremely luxurious and well made. And there is nothing in the market that I can think of with luxury bags that is like Swift leather. I think I've talked enough about Swift. I've made my point that I really like the leather. I think it has a lot of durability. It's got a lot of pros to the fact that it's lightweight, um, but it's not a cheap leather. It's, yeah, it's definitely not in the low cost range when it comes to Hermes leathers, but we'll talk about pricing a little bit later. Now on to Chev leather. Chev is made from goat skin. There are in fact two types of Chev leathers. There is um, Chev Mysore, and then there is also Chev de Cromandel, if that's how you say it. I don't know. Butchering it again, but yeah, there are two types of Chev leathers. And the difference is just purely with the grains, how the grains are on Chev leather, but the characteristics of the leather are essentially the same for both of them. Durability of Chev leather is that it's not as scratch resistant as Chogo and Clemence. However, it does take a decent amount of effort to scratch Chev. Um, when scratched, it doesn't pull off color like what Epsom does. Pretty much all the other leathers don't do this other than Epsom. It kind of just, um, when, you, when you do scratch Chev leather, you would have to have enough force behind it and it kind of just skips over the grain. Like, I don't have a Togo bag, but I was going to use a Togo bag as an example, but it kind of skips over the grain, so it kind of pulls the grain. If I have a picture, I will include it of what I'm sort of talking about. I had um, Chev SLGs where they have gotten scratched. You can kind of see that, that scratch where it skipped, but it's not obvious to the appearance anyway. Um, yeah, because of the sheen in the leather, I think it, it doesn't make that scratch kind of obvious and also the grains being a nice Like kind of size. Yeah scratches aren't obvious on shared leather. However, they can happen, but it's not the most susceptible Shape of chev leather it as is as firm as Togo um, But it will likely hold the shape much longer than that of Togo. So in the feel of Togo and Chev, it's got a similarity of how it feels, like it, they both feel like firm leathers, but over time Chev is more likely to hold its shape longer than Togo, and that I feel is probably to do with the weight of Chev being a lighter leather. Weight of Chev 
It's very lightweight. It's similar in weight to Epsom, probably even maybe a little bit lighter than Epsom maybe. But yeah, quite similar in weight. Now as for the appearance of Chev, so you've got Chev Mysore, like I said, you've got the two, and the Chev Mysore has the grain throughout the leather, it has no obvious spines or veining, it's just a consistent grain across that leather, and it also has a very slight sheen to it, more of a sheen than what Togo has, um, probably similar in sheen to what Epsom has actually. Now Chev de Cromandel, however you say it, also has a grain throughout the leather, however it has a visible spine sort of down the center or has this visible spine somewhere throughout the leather. It's kind of like a cluster of veins just coming together in one sort of line. A sheen but more, a little bit more of an iridescent one um, where it can kind of, the color on a Chev de Cremandle can look quite different to that of a color on a Chev Mysore. On the Decremandle, it has kind of an iridescence effect, and that's because usually on the Chev Decremandle, the vein, um, not the vein, sorry, the grains are actually much smaller. No, 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 not much smaller, but they're smaller, and they it kind of creates a different kind of iridescence to it. The availability of Chev, unfortunately, it is very hard to get. It is not commonly produced for Burke and Kelly's or Constance. It's pretty much only available in a special order. There is the occasional production of Chev um, on bags like uh, Kelly. I've seen it on Kelly 25, mini Kellys especially. But yeah, it's unfortunately not common on the elusive bags. It is hard to get. Uh, it is more often available just in small leather goods, which is unfortunate because Chev has a lot of qualities to offer that are really great. Um, yeah, and it's a really beautiful looking leather. I love Chev. If I could have a Chev bag, that would be fantastic. Now onto the cons of this leather, unfortunately, like I said, it is hard to get. Um, it's not as scratch resistant as some of the other options, but it's still scratch resistant. More scratch resistant than that of Epsom, and more scratch resistant of the leather I'm next about to talk about. The structured bags at the Kelly Celia, it doesn't stay completely rigid forever. It will eventually kind of, not slouch, but it will kind of get some suppleness looking to the, um, the shape of the Kelly Celia, because the Kelly Celia is a structured bag so Chev will hold its shape for quite long so the pros when it's scratched it isn't obvious you really have to be looking for where the scratch is was so that's a good thing it's a fairly firm leather comparable to Epsom in some way when it comes to firmness but to touch it does feel different than Epsom does Chev feels luxurious feel you can feel the real natural grain on the leather so yeah that's a great thing about Chev is that you get kind of the the pros that Epsom offers with it being a firm structured leather. Just unfortunately the shirt is hard to get. Um, it's a very lightweight leather but still holds its shape. It retouches really well in spa so no problems um, with colour touch ups in spa. It will come out fantastic. You won't see where it's sort of been done. And the other pro um, also is that it's a relatively carefree leather. Scratch resistant to some extent, you know, and even when it does scratch, it's not obvious. But the thing that I've also got here is probably one of the biggest pros is that this is a very desirable leather, um, so it holds its value well in the resale market. Because it's so hard to get, you don't see it commonly produced, it's pretty much only available in special orders or very rarely produced in just a um, normal standard production um, Birkin, Birkin or Kelly. I, I Chef, I don't see any more in the Constance. It is in like vintage ones you will see it probably in the Chev de Cremandle. The other thing is that it has a nice sort of unique sheen to the leather. The colours look different on the bags, it's kind of got an iridescence to it, especially in the de Cremandle. And the Mysore, however, um, it's more oftenly available. I don't really see the Chev de Cremandle anymore. I more see only the Chev Mysore these days, but that has a very nice sheen to it. Now onto Tadalac. I don't know the exact rele um, release year date of Tadalac, and the same for the next leather I'll talk about. Tadalac is a calf skin leather. It's similar to box calf. It's kind of, it's called like a doppelganger for box calf. However, it is um, more smoother and softer in feel than box calf, and it has absolutely no visible grain. But when you still look at Tadalac, it's still quite comparable to box calf in that kind of shine that it has. So the durability of Tadalac, it does, however, scratch easily. And the reason for this is that because the actual dye on the leather is transparent. However, when you do scratch a Tadalac bag, it is like a surface scratch. So it can sort of buff into the bag, especially with some conditioning. Uh, it also doesn't expose like any bare color underneath. So it's just 
a surface scratch. So if you scratch a bag, if you scratch, um, like my blue Tadillac uh, Constance that I had, it did have scratches on the bag, but it still stayed blue. It didn't expose like white underneath or anything like that. So the shape of the bag is that it's very firm, it holds its shape really, really, really well, and it will not slouch. So it's a very structured type of leather. It is used mainly in bags that are designed to appear structured, so like the Constance and the Kelly Cellier. The weight is that it's very lightweight compared um, to Epsom, in, probably compared to Epsom in weight, I'd say, maybe even a little bit lighter than Epsom, but it's in that light, very light, um, lightweight weather, lightweight leather category. The appearance of Tadalac is very smooth, semi-shiny, like I said, very similar to box calf in appearance. It's not as shiny as box calf, but I, that's purely because box calf can actually develop a patina over time because it's an unfinished leather, whereas Tadalac is a finished leather. It means like it's got a finished coating like on the bag. That means that it, um, unfinished leathers means that uh, it can be susceptible to, more susceptible to rain and that sort of thing and elements. But yeah, it's a finished leather, so it's quite similar to box calf. Um, it's kind of like a hybrid of box calf and swift leather because it, Tadillac has a bit of softness to it. It feels and looks very luxurious, Tadillac. It, um, yeah, it feels like a very expensive leather. It feels really nice. It doesn't feel common, which is what's nice about it as well because it's quite smooth, shiny, luxurious. has like an iridescent sort of look to it. Um, colors on Tadillac also appear very, very different. Um, than on the, any of the other leathers. So I have seen like a blue, blue I think it's blue Azimir, Azimir or something like that. I have seen that on a Tadillac bag, on a Tadillac Constance, and then I have seen that color on like a Togo or a Clemence bag. And the blue Azimir is like a beautiful sparkly, it looks totally different than what it does on the other leathers. As for availability, it is not available in Birkins or Kelly Vuitton, not at least from what I have seen. I don't know, maybe you can special order it. It is available mainly only in the Kelly Cellia and in the Constance. Now the cons of a Tadillac is that it does scratch easily. It is not so commonly produced by Hermes, so it is a little bit hard to get. Not as hard as Chev, but it is still a little bit hard to get. It's not available in the Return Kelly or in the Birkin. It's got quite a shiny appearance compared to all the other leathers that I have mentioned, so that might be a con for someone. Now onto the pros. The pros is that Tadillac holds its shape really well. So it's a firm leather, will always hold its shape. Um, it's the closest leather to box calf that is more readily available since box is actually a push order offer. So if you like that kind of shiny look that box calf has, Tadillac is a great option. It's very lightweight. It also showcases color really well as it's a smooth leather on top of the fact that the shiny finish makes the colors look quite different, have like a sparkly iridescence to them. Yeah, the shine in the light is quite beautiful and this leather looks like no other in the market. It looks very luxurious, very expensive and there's nothing comparable that I can think of in the market other than, you know, Hermes Boxcar. Last leather is Evercolor. Evercolor is a more recent leather. I think it's only been around about four or five years. So it is fairly new to Hermes. The durability of Evercolor has very similar qualities to Swift. It is soft but not as buttery soft as Swift. It has some more scratch resistance to it um, than its other leather counterparts like Tadillac and Swift. The shape, it tends to hold shape really well without looking firm. doesn't hold shape as well as Chev or Epsom, but it still does hold its shape fairly well. So Swift holds the shape fairly well, Evercolor does even better at that. The weight is that it's very light, it's very lightweight, comparable to Swift, not as light as Swift, but it's probably lighter than um, Epsom and Chev. The appearance is that it, it's like it's essentially swift leather, but the grains, like what you probably can't see on the camera, um, in Evercolor, these, the grains that you see on swift become prominent. So it's like they've actually made the grains come out of swift leather. That's what Evercolor looks like. So it's a very fine grain, still feels smooth to touch, looks smooth, but you can see that there is now some grain to it. The availability, I haven't seen Evercolor done in a Birkin, probably exists, but I haven't seen it. I have seen it in Kelly Return, uh, and I have seen it more often in Constance bags. Now the cons of Evercolor, it has the possibility to show scratches on black or very deep colors, the same like Swift does. It's not easily available in the elusive bags. Like I said, more commonly seen in the Constance. It's not a firm leather, uh, so again, it wouldn't be a great option for a Kelly Cellier. 
Now the pros of Evercolor, if you like Swift, you definitely will like Evercolor. I know I would like Evercolor, Evercolor. I would like to have an Evercolor bag. It has more scratch resistance than um, Swift does and definitely more than what Tadillac does. It shows color really well, again, because it behaves quite like Swift. Swift shows color really well, so it's ever color. Uh, it has a smooth to touch, like Swift does, but it has, this time, an actual visible grain to it, a very unique grain, where it's not an obvious grain like Clemence or Togo, but it still has a grain. It also retouches very well in spa. Again, similar to Swift, you have no problems in a spa retouch. And it is a relatively, Relatively carefree leather, but I consider Swift to be a relatively carefree leather. Now, I've concluded everything to talk about leathers. To talk quickly about pricing. So, Epsom is Hermes' cheapest leather. It's the cheapest leather that they have. And another note is that um, the Kelly Cellier versus the Kelly Retorn. If you have a Kelly Cellier 25, a Kelly Retorn 25, the Cellier will always be more expensive because there's more detail to that bag because it's an outside stitched bag, whereas the Retorn is an inside stitch and they just flip it over. So it's obviously easier for the artisan to make. Not easy, but easier than Cellier. Now, I've kind of got a rough pricing of how to talk about Epsom and all the other uh, leathers, how they kind of sit. So Epsom, um, so Epsom's the cheapest, and then 200 USD more will be Togo or Clemence. So you pay 200 USD on top of the price of Epsom to have Togo or Clemence. Clemence. And then um, it'll be an additional 450 USD more on top of the base price of Epsom to have Swift. And then it is 500, this is rough pricing. This is not exact, but this is kind of can give you an indication. Then you have It'll be 500 USD more on the base price starting at Epsom being the cheapest to actually obtain Chev Evercolor Tadillac. Okay, now I think that pretty much wraps up everything that I have to say about Hermes leathers. Hopefully I can sign off this video before my battery dies. Thank you very much for watching. If you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you in my next video. Bye.